Matthew 9, 35-38 And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Welcome to the Neighborhood Church Revive Podcast. We're so glad that you're joining us today as we unpack big ideas about God's word together. My name is Sean Thomas. I'm an associate campus pastor here at Neighborhood Church, and we believe that God's word is relevant and helpful even for today, which is why we take the time to unpack what it says here with you. And we're being joined by our regular crew, uh, Pastor Mike McKay. Good to be here. Good to have you here. And Justin McElderly. Hey, Sean. How are you? Good, man. Good, Good. to see you guys. It's it's not super bright and early, but I know that we've uh, kind of had long weeks and been doing a lot of work. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. But we're still present with you guys listening here. Um, if you listened to last week's podcast, we talked about um, how to make the most of your life, uh, which had an element of, of giving, of blessing others, of helping others, of serving others. I think service was a big word there. And for this week, uh, th- this past Sunday, we continued continued that idea, but more on an angle of how to love people well or how to, um, like kind of the motivation of our service and mm-hmm. what that looks like. And so, yeah, we just want to unpack that with you guys. Mike, you had a cool kind of like three word. Well, it's it's uh, these last two times together have been focusing on really, okay, now how do we live this life that God has for us how do, and how do we make it count? Yeah. And We've used, you know, every time we've done a Sunday morning, we've talked about a certain biblical character. Mm-hmm. Uh, and these two Sundays, we're really focusing on on Jesus. Yeah. So that we're living like Jesus. He's our example. We're called Christians, which means little Christ, that we act like Christ. And so last week we talked about loving, I mean, uh, serving like Jesus. And then this week is talking about loving like Jesus. And uh, Justin and I chose different passages to kind of... Uh, show that and, and walk through that. Mine was in Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 to 38. And in that, you we look at Jesus and see uh, three key elements of how to love like him mm-hmm. and really how to put the love that God has placed in our own life and heart into action. Mm-hmm. And that's through empathy, compassion, and passion. Yeah, And all of those are related because we yeah. inter- intertwine some of those words together. But uh, empathy is that ability to be able to feel with people mm. and to be in their shoes yeah. and and go, wow, th- you know, understand. It's a lot of understanding of their position. Yeah, different than sympathy. Yes. I think it's, yeah, it's, yeah, and we'll provide a definition, yeah, yeah, yeah but that's a good definition. Empathy diff- is, a, is, is, and we're, you know, in a society, and you can look online, you Google uh, empathy, and, and you'll see there's many studies done that the world is losing their empathy empathy mm. ability and it's it, cuz empathy it's like a muscle it needs to be exercised yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're taught that as kids and you kind of exercise it all through life and these days with a great self focus yeah. and almost a self obsession we've kind of lost the ability yeah. to empathize with people and in this passage Jesus you can see Jesus his empathy yeah uh, and one of the ways to show empathy is like through a word picture and to, mm. to be able to say, you know, I understand, because it's a lot of active listening back and forth. Oh, I understand yeah. you feel this. Is this how you feel? Yeah. And Jesus really described that in verse 35 when he said, he looked upon the people and he saw that they were, uh, in verse 36, like sheep without a shepherd. They were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Mm. And um, that's, uh, he's he's expressing, he's emoting. He's, yeah. he's, he's saying, I get you. Yeah. And then compassion is, uh, is that, Empathy in action, saying, "Okay, I feel this way. Now I'm going to do something about it." Yeah, like what? Does and that passion mean? is that welling up within you to to see how much God has passion loved you, and so you passionately love others with a com- a compulsion to kind of do what you can and and care about people and, yeah. and things like that. Yeah, that's that burning fire. Yes, kind of motivating. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I want to just take a quick moment to um, just to, to give our listeners a, a bit of a warning, um, and this will be not a rabbit trail, but just um, uh, I've heard a phrase um, lately, uh, the last month or so, that's that's been a little concerning to me, um, and I just want to let people, just to give people um, something to be aware of. Um, I think empathy, I, I'm totally on board with you, Mike. That's something that our society, our culture is is 
forgetting that muscle, what that looks like. And that's so valuable, especially for Christians. So this phrase that I've heard uh, recently is called toxic empathy. Mm. And um, and where that idea is coming from, it's a bit of a reaction. I'm sure many people have heard of the phrase toxic masculinity, right? And that's kind of this um, kind of, I guess, more liberal co- a critique of of a classic, you know, role male roles and everything like that. Okay, and so there's this pushback recently that I've heard hmm. from the opposite side called uh, toxic empathy, and I really just want to give people a word of caution that. Um, Empathy shouldn't be seen as a kind of a tit for tat or like a, a political football or something like that. I, I think empathy is is something that's so valuable in the Christian faith, um, just like compassion, grace, um, and so yeah. Just just want to encourage our listeners if that's if if the word empathy is something that makes you cringe or bristle. Mm. Um, uh, Take some time to do a deep dive into how Jesus interacts with people. I think, uh, Justin, that's uh, uh, the passage that you chose for Sunday um, is a classic example of what it means to empathize. Like Mike was saying, to take time to sit and active listen, or actively listen. I'm going to give a message on uh, John chapter four in a couple of weeks, and that's another empathetic, active listening. Who are you? Right. What is your situation going on? Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's just something that I've heard that phrase <laughs> in the last month or so, yeah. and um, I just want to encourage our listeners. Um, yeah, empathy is not a bad thing. Right. And that's, that's really interesting. And I, I think too... With that, with the way I broke it down, the points I came with um, for my passage, the passage I chose was you have the Jairus is pursuing Jesus. His daughter's about to die. His daughter's 12 years old. He's a respected man in the community. Um, he goes to Jesus. Jesus is like, okay, let's go. Let's go see her. Yeah. And it's tight city streets. It's big crowds following. Everyone's pressing in on each other. A woman who's been bleeding for 12 years comes and touches his robe, is healed. Um, and at that point, that could have just been something interesting that happened on the way to Jairus's house. Yeah, she would have been happy. Everything would have been Story's fine. Over. But yeah, but yeah. but Jesus stops, and so my first point was slow down. Like like if we want to be empathetic, if we want to see where people are, we need to s- slow down enough to give space for God to do that work in our hearts and to actually see what's going on. The next thing was pay attention. And we just talked a little bit. I won't go through the whole sermon, but uh, you can look it up online. But of all the different things that it wasn't just that this woman was bleeding. It was everything that came with that, that would keep her on the margins of society on the outside looking in. And so Jesus took the time to not just heal her, Mm -hmm. that her, her faith touching his robe and, and him at work through that, however that worked, That healed her body, but there was so much more of her that needed healing. She needed to be brought back into community to let everyone who know who, you know, and and it doesn't say it in the text, but John 9, there's the passage with the blind man. Hey, who sinned, him or his parents, right? And um, so there was surely people who thought, what did she do wrong, you know? And so Jesus restores her, not just physically, but completely Mm -hmm. in that. And so then the last point was do what you can. And then I added a little bonus. So then we went back through and thought through what that looks like in our life. But also there's the piece to remember. Um, And that's what I was was thinking of when you were talking about toxic um, empathy Empathy, is that um, we're not Jesus also, right? So so (laughs) we want to empathize. We want to do what we can, but there's also limits to what we're able to do and sometimes what we should do. Um, And so, um, you know, toxic... uh, we want to be empathetic without being codependent, right? Is yeah, is the yeah, thing or too? So or yeah, we're enabling, and so that's I don't know. That's just a thought that that popped there. That's it's helpful, like yeah. that might be something. If that's what's meant by it, then you know, fair play, good. But yeah, but sure. but if it's like not caring for people, and yeah, clearly that's not the way we want to go. And yeah. and it's funny as I'm preaching on this. Sorry, I'm filibustering here, but um, <laughs> but uh, as Talk I away. <laughs> as I was preaching on this, um, there's a, a homeless fellow that I've been interacting with who comes by the LaSalle campus occasionally, and uh, he's been coming by lately. And so I've been working with him. And you know, when you're in this passage, you're like, okay, you know, I don't really have any wiggle room. I gotta I gotta be practicing what yeah. I preach here. Yeah. And it has been incredibly challenging. And I feel like it's it's one thing to think about being empathetic, but there's a cost to actually doing it. And mm. and it's been a very frustrating process because mm. yeah, you know, he doesn't work on my timeline or yeah. you know, listen to me and I'm sure everything would be fixed if he would just listen to me. You know? <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. you know? It's, it's interesting you mentioned this, Justin, because as I was 
taking some study time with this. I had kind of set aside because it, it's a cram, tough crammed week and you're trying to find time to study and, and get that in. So I, you know, I went to a secluded place. I, I was ready. You know, I did have my phone with me and I was, I was all set. If someone called, I was going to just put it to uh, voicemail and not, and not yeah. do that. And so I'm, I'm, I'm talking about compassion, which is what, you know, Justin was just saying that Jesus was doing. He was having compassion on this woman. Yeah. And, you know, and he did have empathy. He saw her, which is in my passage, the same thing. He just saw the crowds. It, yeah. It's stopping and seeing, it's noticing, it's yeah. it's doing that. But as I was doing this, and, and sometimes giving compassion is not always convenient. Mm. You know, it's on your yeah. way to Jairus' house or it's doing yeah. something. So I'm doing this and this call comes and it's a person who I know is struggling. Mm. And I'm just going, if I take this call, there's 45 minutes gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And and God's kind of I think God just allowed it to come in there and say so you're going to practice what you preach Mike you know you're gonna, yeah yeah so you know I took <laughs> yeah. the call and it you know and everything worked out just fine but it, it's yeah. it's yeah. the and yes anything that is a good thing can be toxic yeah you know, there's sure. there's toxic charity mm. there's yeah. toxic giving there's to, mm. there's all kinds of things can be toxic and yeah. and I, I know that that is. Uh, put there to kind of push us all away you know mm-hmm. I believe the enemy puts that kind of stuff in there to push us away from doing anything because mm-hmm. yeah. you know, it's safe yeah. to do nothing exactly. and no it's not yeah. it's not safe to do nothing it's actually yeah. harmful because God places you and, and I'm going to talk about the same thing next next time next week when we talk about the woman at the well because yeah. um, I'll be preaching here while you're preaching at Los Al mm-hmm. and, and, and he, God places you at the right place at the right time so that you would show empathy compassion mm-hmm. to people because yeah. we're that conduit of his love we're supposed to love you know that jesus said how you know was asked what's the greatest thing we can do in all of life you know is to love god and to love others yeah. and to loving others requires empathy compassion and we need to move move with that and so that we're to we're to love the people around us yeah even when it's inconvenient and yes we need to be caution cautious that we're not um toxic in that mm-hmm. you know yeah uh we throw on we throw around the term codependent, and there's a lot, you know, a lot of misunderstanding of, and and understanding yeah, to the, what that word means. But we term, can be, yeah. you know, overly helpful, mm-hmm. or uh, you know, just try to push on somebody that they're not ready to receive, or really thinking we think we're being compassionate, but actually yeah. we're being hurtful. When I think, it, especially as you know, like I think totally right on. You know, God puts us in the right place at the right time. We need to have eyes to see, ears to hear, and we need to be responsive to that. And I think as we mature as Christians, we should also grow to learn ourselves, have accountability groups, you know, to have people speak into our lives, because those things can come up of like, wow, I have a tendency to throw myself into this project at the detriment of other things, you know, and like we kind of see sometimes like those maybe toxic habits that are coming out where it might, we might think, oh, I'm being generous, where it's like, oh no, you're not feeding your family, (laughs) you know? Yeah, and, right, and you're, yeah. you know, kids are going without new shoes, and right. that's not good, you know. Yeah. Well, and it also yeah. can be done for a selfish motive. Mm-hmm. I want to take yeah. a picture of me giving food to the homeless. Oh gosh! So that yeah. I can post it and say, "Look at how altruistic I am." Yeah, <laughs> and this stuff hey, like that. And that's not the point. You the know, humble it's, like, it's not about they you. Call it. yeah. yeah. You know, it's not about you being all. You know, I'm being so helpful, and oh, you know, push away. I want. I need to make a phone call to them, and I need to show that I am empathetic. Yeah. Now, if God's leading you to do that, great. But if you're doing it so that you get something from it it's and like, you know and we know those lines yeah it's most people, i should say most people yeah, know those like lines. they know that i'm doing this really for me yeah yeah, yeah. and and then yeah i mean and, it's, and we have, that's when it becomes toxic I yeah think, also yeah. oh totally yeah and, and it's helpful to yeah to have people in our lives to speak into that mm-hmm. um how do you guys feel c- kind of moving on in the conversation how do you guys feel the holy spirit mm-hmm. for you guys personally has empowered you um to love in a way that Jesus loved. Like in your lives, like, you know, you guys just came back from Greece recently. Obviously, you know, that's a a mission trip that's high on your minds probably. Um, But even in your life, when there were maybe smaller things or littler things, Mm -hmm. interactions with with individuals. Justin, you were talking about this person over at Los Alamitos. Yeah. Um, How do you feel like the Holy Spirit empowers you to do it? Because certainly we can, in and of ourselves, and I think, I love this country. I think America's wonderful. I think people are... Gen- generally virtuous, however, like we do stuff out of our own power, but that only takes us so far. It could cause resentment. You know, I mean, there's a difference between me muscling to be like 
altruistic, like you said, Mike. And then there's a difference between the Holy Spirit empowering us to love mm-hmm. like Jesus. Where have you guys seen that demarcation in your lives? Um, well, Justin's thinking. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just jump in with yeah, something yeah, that yeah, came yeah. to my mind right now. Is that the first thing is to be so full of and 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 um, have in your life understood and studied the character of the Lord and watched His life? Mm, mm. Because when we read and study and understand how Jesus, you know, felt with. Jairus to go towards his daughter to yeah. to to felt with this woman to do that as he healed blind people as he was you know there was a, a funeral procession going on and he saw this woman weeping because this was her only son and and really her only way of making it in life and it's that Jesus moved with compassion healed him raised him from the dead and mm-hmm. to to watch that that's our example so yeah. so. The Holy Spirit takes what we've taken in and helps us apply it to life. So to me, first is really understanding Jesus and looking at his life. You know, read the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and watch Jesus. Yeah. Watch how he treated people. And that that now we have an example to follow. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, I, I the reason I pause so long is I think I'm very much in process on this. I think if I would have you'd have asked this question six months ago, shoot, three months ago, um, I probably would have made something up, but the honest answer would be I'm helpful, I'm a people pleaser by nature. Yeah. And so and I'm reactive. So in that sense, it would be a, when someone brings a problem to me, I mm-hmm. probably go too far in trying to fix things, but if they don't bring it to me, I'm okay with that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and I don't know how all this is related. I just have noticed in, since I've been back in sabbatical, people have asked how it was and it was all right, <laughs> which is a bummer to say for sabbatical. But yeah. what happened for me at sabbatical was that I really... Had a, my family didn't come with me, my wife and kids, and so I had a lot of solitude time with my my parents and whatnot up in Washington. But a lot of solitude time that was glorious. Mike, Mike's, <laughs> Mike's, cringing Mike's right like now. cringing right now. But <laughs> yeah, who's but, the introvert? Introvert? Who's the extrovert? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I, I may uh, try to do less solitude time because it was really hard in the sense of God showing me some stuff that I need to wrestle with. I need to think about um, from my past that that wasn't mm-hmm. by any objective standard, not traumatic, but it did something in me to where I'm like, okay, why is this thing from childhood coming up? That's ridiculous, but it was there. And so, um, so whatever it was in terms of attending to those wounds, and I haven't even like fully processed, I just noticed. Um, but I feel like since I've been back, um, I've had, and it's only a short window. It's been like a month, you know, so we'll see how long this lasts. Right. (laughs) But, but I feel like I have sought pain, um, sought people who are hurting, um, not shied away from it and not just waited for it. I've been proactive, at least reasonably so, and certainly more than I've ever been. Mm -hmm. Um, but also I feel like I've been wiser in it too. Like, you know, I mentioned that last point of you're not Jesus. So Mm -hmm. I go, I give myself to it, say, how can I help, um, help how I can, but also I'm not chasing people trying to change them. And so, um, so I'm not even sure where the, the, that, that's where my mind went when you asked the question and not, and not sure. And it's still in process. Yeah, but, let me um, let me pull in into that just yeah. same thing because of the word that came into my mind when you were asking that Sean is the word inkling, hmm. and uh, and I think that's what the Holy Spirit does, and I think Justin, that's what the Holy Spirit's doing with you. He's hmm. he's giving you inklings, hmm. and then it's now our choice what we're going to do with those inklings. Hmm. You know, inklings meaning those little thoughts that pop in our mind. Go, where'd that come from? Yeah, yeah. What was and uh, and I think the Holy Spirit is active in our life, and that's a whole another podcast about how does the Holy Spirit work in your life. But He's active in that, and He's He's like your life coach. He's like that voice huh. in the night that and encourages you, and yeah. and that can bring to you, bring to your remembrance, as uh, John talks about in the Gospel of John, the the, the teachings of Jesus mm-hmm. and and all of that. But I, there's been for me personally, um, the Holy Spirit has prodded, encouraged, woken me up, mm. done things like just just a couple of weeks ago, one of our um families I uh, had their um uh, son was going through some medical issues and so you know he asked us to pray so I was praying and then I don't know one night I got woken up at 3, 4 and 5. And I just woke up and 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 there was an inkling huh. 
of the Holy Spirit to pray for him. Wow. So I just sat there and prayed for him for a bit and then went back to sleep, woke up again, pray for him, pray for him. And so I told that to uh, his dad. And he just, you, you would not believe this was, those are the exact times that, the, that these things were happening. Wow. And I think the Holy Spirit works at that. So he, yeah. he, as you're moving through life, you know, it's no mistake. You see somebody yeah. as you're walking by the way. Yeah. And so God, that's an inkling to go do something. Now, yeah. Jesus acted upon those and why he healed some people and didn't. I mean, I just trust he knows the will totally. of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As he's God himself. But, he, you know, he 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 didn't heal everybody, mm-hmm. but he healed some that, that that was important for him to heal. Yeah. And obviously Jairus' daughter and this woman were part of that. The, the couple of uh, blind men that were on the road to Jericho mm-hmm. that we had talked about a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, he had an inkling and... and you know, I wish it was more audible and more tangible to go, okay, here's the formula to understand what inkling this is, because we always have to take any thought captive to the Word of God. Yeah, Does it match here yeah, here in the scripture. in the Word of God? Because, you know, my, my human brain, woo, it's, you know, whoop, there's a squirrel, you know, it's, it's, it's going all over the place, and... and <laughs> inkling, inkling, yeah, inkling, yeah. inkling, inkling, inkling. And I have to discern those, Yeah, yeah. you know, totally. because it's, it's uh, you know, even when that person called... I had to discern, is this from God or is this a test or where is it from? And I, or is this person just, yeah, yeah like, you want to shoot the breeze? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, you know, stuff like that and and stuff like that. And and so, you know, what, how do I work that? And, you know, sometimes I miss and sometimes I hit. I don't, you know, yeah. I, I trust that God's going to guide me. And I don't beat myself up yeah. when I think I've missed something, you know, and I, and I don't... Uh, uh, I stress over that because I really believe it's God inkling, you know, God drawing us to where he wants us to 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 act out this empathy to have compassion yeah. and move yeah. forward and right and how badly are you going to miss when it's doing something good right, right. like i mean the, the the downside of that is maybe you get overstretched for a season and then you have to learn and cult, you know hone your wisdom after that but um like yeah when it's kind of determining god's will like satan's not going to tell you to go love somebody, you know? So, yeah, so I mean, yeah. like, so I, I think, you know, as we're learning to hear the voice of God, that's, that's, I think one thing is, is if, if you hear a voice telling you to do something good, then act on it, you know, and, and you'll learn to discern whether that was just your innate mercy at work or whether that was the Holy Spirit, you know, and, you know, those who are less merciful, it's probably the Holy Spirit telling you to be merciful, but for those who are, you're probably overloaded with, I need to do everything. Um, yeah. And that may be a little more discernment um, in right. those and, seasons. And there are so. things that where you have priorities with that have to yeah. fix into that. You know, like you were up till 2.30 last night working on your sermon mm-hmm. because you had filled your days with other things. Mm-hmm. You know, some of them were being compassionate. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's some times we have to flex and say, you know what, I really have to do my top priority here that mm-hmm. God has already called me to. Cause yeah. I mean, there's also baseball playoffs oh, yeah. too. So Okay. <laughs> <laughs> True confession there. <laughs> True confession. Yeah, yeah. There's, you know, there's always room for fun. Room for yeah. Fun. Joke but, was on me. We lost. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> Anyways, but, that, yeah. you know, it's, it's. I think there's, yes, it's follow God's inklings. It's, yeah. You know, in the, and and those are the Holy Spirit's proddings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, it's important for uh, our folks listening. Um, make no mistake, our faith is a supernatural faith. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's, it's tough because I know there's ideas of, you know, kind of like hyper charismatic, you know, doing all these super demonstrative things of, you know, like, I got to speak in tongues and I got to raise people from the dead and and heal limbs and everything. And, and Hey, that's great. (laughs) Um, but what we're talking about here, these are supernatural inklings Mm -hmm. and a, a prodding from the God of the universe. That is something miraculous amazing supernatural and and we should own that as as believers and it's again it's not this crazy over the top thing it's that still small voice mm-hmm. like you were saying Justin like when is it a bad thing to do something good you know and and but still that's that's the god of the universe equipping us to do something like that so i just encourage you guys listening like own those moments as divine intervention, supernatural moments, when you are moved 
to compassion, when you are woken up in the middle of the night to pray for someone, those are moments that God is ordaining. And uh, I hate to use the word "given assignment," you know, because that sounds like school. But you know, I mean, there isn't a, a, a part of that of I feel called to pray for this person. I feel called to give my time to this person who's calling me up. Um, and yeah, I just I just encourage us to own that and to celebrate that as a supernatural moment. Right, and it's even good to ask. God, who who do you want me to care for today? Yeah, yeah. And it could be as simple as just a prayer for them. It could be saying hi. Yeah. It could be walking across the street and greeting that neighbor that you haven't yet met. Yeah. It could yeah. be, you know, smiling at the clerk that's taking your groceries, uh, you know, paying for your groceries. And it could be a number of different things. It could yeah. be helping out at your school. It could be, uh, you know, thanking somebody who's like a, a, a police officer, a firefighter, a teacher, a yeah. public servant, and thanking them. Those are acts of compassion and care. Yeah. And how, how different our world would be hmm. if we would just do that on a daily basis. Yeah. I mean, there would be so much people would, because when you love somebody that like, show an act of compassion, it, it means the world like this, like this woman who was feeling estranged and, you know, because of her condition was um, ostracized from society. Probably no one has touched her in, yeah, from in you know, in a, passage, in a hug or yeah. thing, in a, in a hug or yeah. uh, any kind of thing or included her. And he turns and he looks at her mm stops and, mm-hmm. and then says, you know, this this is this person is part of our family. This yeah. person has belonging. And um that's what happens when we care. Yeah. 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 Awesome guys. Well man, this is <laughs> great stuff. I think we'll wrap it up here. Um any final thoughts? And also I, I'm kind of getting a sense um after our final thoughts, let's end our time um with maybe praying for our listeners. Just as as you guys are listening to this, we love <laughs> that you guys listen and are faithful. We have some folks who are super faithful, some folks who are like, I just found out about you guys. Yeah. Um but after uh, Mike and Justin share their final thoughts, we're just gonna spend just a moment uh just praying for you guys briefly. Yeah. I think for me one the one thing that kind of went left on said for me in this was um, yeah, the, the inklings and the direction from God is so critical because we can be so overwhelmed with the need we, as well connected as we are globally like yeah. you know you would just have to worry about a tornado in your community 200 years ago because that's generally all that was known about now we know yeah. about everything and yeah. so it takes some discernment in in saying okay what what does God want me to do because I can't do it all yeah. um, and so I think that's an important piece but also to not be paralyzed by that mm-hmm. on the other on the flip side of it so one of the things I mentioned in the sermon and I know this is probably longer than you want but I think it's important <laughs> is yeah, like good. the best thing about Greece for me was taking a bite, however small out of a problem that I would have just blown off as that's too big for me. Mm-hmm. That's too big for even our church. Yeah. Um, it's bigger than the world and the UN can happen. It can handle right now, but we went a little team of 10 part of a little larger missions organization, which is part of all the people public and private m- mobilized to help yeah. meet the needs of refugees. Um, and so we were able to do our part and to, and 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 I feel content with that not that I've solved anything but that I've done something about something that yeah. I know is important to God's heart and and that's good that's when we serve at the OC food bank we're not curing homelessness or hunger but we're doing our part to mm-hmm. to bring relief and that's a good thing and to 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 celebrate that and mm-hmm. I don't know that 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 was just one that was floating that I think if I don't say it now, I don't know when it's going to come <laughs> out. Right. So, so you guys are blessed. Yeah. For so much nugget. for my last. So, yeah. Your last. Yeah, that's the last, the last word. Just yeah. Made. Well, I'll just add to that because that's kind of where I was going to go a little bit. It's all too easy to do nothing because we feel overwhelmed at the largeness of what mm-hmm. needs to be done. Yeah. But every little bit matters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every little expression of love makes a difference. So try something. Do something, love somebody, yeah. feel with somebody, have that empathy, compassion, let it move to the end. And then let the Lord well in your heart, what is it you are passionate for? Maybe it is for refugees. Yeah. Maybe it is for people caught in uh, in the whole human trafficking area. Maybe yeah. it is for whatever that goes on in your world. God will give you a great passion that you'll be able to draw others yeah, with, along you with, with that, you with that, along with you that. But, but do something. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, thanks, guys. Mike, would you mind, like I said, just briefly praying for our listeners, yeah. and then I'll wrap it up with our salutation. If you're driving, don't close your eyes. <laughs> yes. Wisdom. <laughs> yeah, but let me pray. Father God, I thank you for those who are listening today. God, I pray that you would bless them, encourage them, uh, let your love be filled in them. May they know how much you are passionate mm. about them, that you have loved them with a deep love. And then, God, I pray that you would encourage them with how they might express that love to other people, how they might love like Jesus, the example that you gave us. And so, God, give them inklings, give them encouragements, give them opportunities. And, Lord, may they be uh, one of those uh, blessings of another person in another person's life today, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us on our Revive podcast. Uh, please share this episode with a friend, especially if uh, they need a prayer. We just had a prayer. That's awesome. You can subscribe to this channel on any of your um, podcast outlets or YouTube. You can find us on YouTube at Neighborhood Church of Los Alamitos or Neighborhood Church of Cyprus. We're also on Facebook and Instagram under those same handles. Um, we're one church, many campuses. Uh, that's why we have different names there. Um, also, we would love to hear from you guys. You can email us at connect at neighborhoodchurch.com. That's C-O-N-N-E-C-T at neighborhoodchurch.com. And as always, the resources, the, um, I don't think we really talked about books today, but uh, we have the sermon messages from Mike and Justin. We have um, our planted series, spoken word, art pieces, all that stuff you can find on the homepage. Um, but also uh, specifically, you can listen to our past Revive podcast on our website at neighborhoodchurch.com slash revive. So definitely go there and check that out. Until next time, guys, we love you, and we pray that God revives your soul. Mm -hmm.